from around the globe, it's theCUBE, with digital coverage of AWS reInvent 2020, sponsored by Intel, AWS, and our community partners. Hello and welcome back to theCUBE's virtual coverage of AWS reInvent 2020 virtual. Normally we're in person this year because of the pandemic we're doing the remote or CUBE virtual covering AWS reInvent Virtual. I'm John Furrier, your host. We are theCUBE Virtual. Two great guests here, Linda Tong, the General Manager of AppDynamics, and Dave McCann, Vice President of AWS Migration, Marketplace, and Control Services. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks so much for having us. You know, Good Linda, to see you again, John. You know, Linda, we've been talking to some AppDynamics folks and some of your customers. Obviously, we've been following the, the, the growth of the marketplace for many years. The confluence of the tailwinds of the innovation going on with COVID and post COVID strategies is about helping customers where they are and they're not in the office anymore. They got to get the job done. This is really important on this cloud migration of getting software in the hands of people to write these modern apps. It's a big theme. What's your perspective on this right now? Because you guys are partnering with Amazon, share your vision. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you nailed it. It's with COVID-19, our customers like IT organizations are finding this need to accelerate their migration to the cloud. And what's more important is they're finding that more and more of their customers are engaging through digital experiences. And with the influx of people leaning on those digital experiences during COVID, uh, performance issues are becoming more and more apparent. And so we're helping our customers as they migrate to the cloud and specifically to AWS. It's a big partnership for us because we need to understand how our customers and how, you know, how they manage performance through these transitions uh, can stay flawless so that they can manage those experiences for their end users. You know, Dave, I've been watching this discovery, uh, obser observation space, observability, service meshes, Kubernetes, you know, cloud native higher level services have really gotten in popularity, have gone mainstream. So there's more and more demand for, I won't call it, um, point products, that's an old term, but in the cloud, these are just higher level services that people are adopting more of. You're seeing huge pickup in the marketplace of companies who are selling through there and engaging, but it's not just selling, you're integrating. What's your vision of all this? So, you know, John, you're absolutely right. Our customers, as they migrate more and more applications to the cloud, and in some regulated industries, they still have applications running on premise they're really actually standing up a, a new operating model where they not only want observability of what's going on, but a full what we would call service management framework or a set of tools to manage the application portfolio. And companies around the world are putting together new combinations of AWS native services, such as CloudWatch, CloudTrail, Service Catalog, AWS Config, Control Tower, with best in class vendors like Cisco AppDynamics and each company is building their own collection of tools into a management framework that allows them to optimally modernize and manage their application portfolio. And it's a rising topic around the world. Linda, I want to get back to you on AppDynamics. You're the leader of the team as general manager. Congratulations. Um, you know a little bit about software in the cloud and cloud scale and you, your career going back to Google now at uh, AppDynamics. You've seen a lot of the changes. What specifically value do you see AppDynamics and Amazon bringing to the market today? Because the world's changed. It's still large scale, it's faster speed, but you can't just buy things like anymore, like got to go in, send a ticket request, go to procurement. Developers want to integrate immediately. They need to integrate when they see a problem, they got to integrate technology. This seems to be a trend. What's your, where, where is AppDynamics bringing the value of the AWS to the market? Absolutely, and I think it's threefold. One, it's for a lot of these developers as they start to migrate their applications and modernize them uh, with AWS and all the great services that are available, we can partner to help them with that modernization effort while giving them visibility into the performance of those applications to make sure that they don't miss a beat as they deploy those on these new sets of services over AWS. The second thing is for those customers that are leveraging AWS for that migration, we have a seamless integration between AppDynamics and AWS. So you can buy our service directly through AWS Marketplace. So that becomes a really easy procurement. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, as you know, a lot of developers have to manage hybrid deployments. So uh, new modern applications hosted on AWS, as well as some of their traditional applications that are talking to each other, they can get that full end to end visibility leveraging AppDynamics so that they can understand what's going on across the entirety of their business 
as they start to lead these transformations across their organization. Dave, just comment on, if you can, because I know a little bit about some of the things you put in place, the enterprise, I forget, development or sales program where enterprises can be more friendly. I think this is kind of a use case where this is proving enterprises can get what they need in the marketplace that not only is it successful, but you have traction with this. Um, what's your so take on there's a, there are a number of motions that we're doing there, John, to help large companies around the world who may have, you know, dozens, hundreds, and in some cases with the Fortune 100, they have thousands of applications. And so you actually have to solve multiple challenges that the company has. On the procurement side, we're obviously working with AppDynamics to publish it as a service right in AWS Marketplace. And we have over 300,000 customers worldwide on AWS Marketplace who are subscribing to software and provisioning it out to hundreds and thousands of developers, all of whom are using their own AWS accounts. So on that provisioning and subscription experience, we work deeply with the AppDynamics team uh, to make that a really seamless experience from discovery to provision to meter and billing. On the interoperability front, as Linda mentioned, you know, our customers want these best in class tools like AppDynamics to work well with the other AWS services so that they can really have a very modern DevOps pipeline for those applications that are moving to more of a CI/CD model. And for people who are still running in a bit more of an ITIL, ITSM model, they've still got to manage and monitor applications that haven't quite got down the full modernization stack. So this is actually happening, not just with the customer, the enterprise, or with the ISV app dynamics. This transition is also working with all the consulting firms and a lot of the large software resellers around the world, the computer centers of Europe, the rack spaces, the presidios of North America, the DXCs of Asia Pacific, these consulting partners are also using tools such as AppDynamics to, to become a managed service provider. And in some cases on that journey to the cloud now join, the customer is saying, I'm really busy, I'm modernizing my applications. Hey, consulting partner, can you manage some part of my infrastructure some part of my stack and tools like AppDynamics in combination with AWS become really central toolkits to the new emerging managed service providers that are all around the world. Yeah, and I, I talked about this years ago with Andy Jassy and I think we were riffing on this from this new set of, of, of category creations of, of services and companies. Um, Linda, this appears to be one of those cases where you know, there's a category with existing spend and existing customers. So we, what he just said is interesting. And I want to get your thoughts because these are, these point to these new areas where app dynamics can potentially help enterprises. What are some of the areas that you see app dynamics helping enterprises in their cloud adoption journey? Cause they want some cloud native. We see hybrid uh, in all the announcements, Outpost, now Edge. It's a distributed computer. I mean, you need to have software at every piece of the puzzle. So what's your, what areas can you share? specifically. Absolutely. And so, you know, like Dave was just saying, it as these organizations start to make these major cloud migrations, one, their applications are getting actually significantly more complex than they've ever been. And they're now spanning a, a much broader ecosystem than they've ever spanned before. So the, the kind of coverage that IT organizations and DevOps needs to cover, uh, not only is seeing this explosion of data, but it's also now spanning areas of control that some of these folks have never had to think about before. And so the value of AppDynamics is our ability to be able to ingest data from your cloud native applications, your traditional applications, all different sources of, of domain data that you want to get, including things like security data. So we can start to correlate that in a meaningful way and then tie that back to business insights. And so the way that AppDynamics is actually bringing value to the table is not only helping our customers get visibility across that entire stack, but actually only surfacing the most meaningful insights to help them act on that, those performance issues that they might see and more meaningfully manage their businesses. You know, Linda, I think you guys are onto something really big, not just on the wave and just the positioning, but one of the trends that we're reporting and we're going to be teasing out all week, three weeks here is automation's great, but that's just baseline. Everything as a service really speaks to some of the things that you guys have to put in place. Because the, the mandate is everything should be a service. Now, I mean, I'm overgeneralizing, but that's generally the ivory tower C-suite message. Make it as a service, cloud scale is beautiful. But then you, when you pass it down to the teams, it's like, that's not easy boss. It's not easy to do. That's really kind of what you're getting at here. It's not just automation and DevOps, it's the business model. Absolutely. It's the intelligence. It's uh, once you create 
thousands and thousands of services. How do you manage them effectively and know what matters and what doesn't? David, final word here on, on this point is when you, when you think about that, if you believe that to be true, then I'm just going to be downloading services whenever I need them. So it's almost like quasi self-service managed services kind of coming together in real time or with my, my off base there. What's your, what's your take on that? No, we're actually working together with App Dynamics to solve these kind of things. So as we proliferate services, John, and you know, AWS has got over 175 services, an application is made up of many components. So how do you actually correlate and associate all the resources that make up that application? And if you think of App Dynamics name, App is the application and Dynamics, what's going on with the application? So we actually just launched today a service catalog application registry, which is a new API surface on AWS service catalog that allows you to define in JSON all the AWS resources from a CloudFormation stack set all the way down to an EC2 instance and associate that to an application now. And so the, the higher level abstraction is what we talk about is management of the application. And what customers want to do, CIOs want to manage the application, all the resources associated with the application, whether the application's running well, is it secure, is it on budget, where's it actually running? So application management is kind of where people are going, even though the application is made up of dozens of associated services. Well, it's great. To so this is the next frontier. Well, you guys are just great to have on. World class partnership, two leaders, App Dynamics, Story History, they continue to do well. And even now with, with the world going on, Dave, congratulations on your success. Final question for both of you is where's the partnership go from here? I think it's a great success story. What's in store for the future? Linda. <laughs> to the moon. Uh, no, it's. Look, AWS is, is an amazing partner and, and Dave is, is a great guy to work with. And where we are going is to help our customers build world-class applications and be able to manage and, mo uh, and modernize those effectively. And there's no way we could do that without partners at AWS. So it's a, this is a long-term relationship here. Well, congratulations, Linda Tong, General Manager, App Dynamics. Thanks for coming on, virtually at least. We'll see you on the interwebs during the next couple of weeks here. Virtual reInvent, Dave McCann, of course, we'll see you again. And great to watch you continue to grow. Is there any new titles going to add to your thing? Marketplace, now it's migration, control services. Um, come on. We're an innovation culture <laughs> and we keep innovating. Great to have you guys on. Thanks for, thanks for sharing, appreciate it. John, Linda, thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for that great insight, really appreciate it. I'm John Furrier, theCUBE. You're watching coverage of reInvent 2020. This is theCUBE Virtual.